Hey guys, Brittany from Equipping Godly Women here. Today I want to talk to you about your children. As parents, of course, we want to raise really great godly children. We want to raise kids who love Jesus, who go out and do these wonderful, amazing things and just shake the gates of the kingdom for the Lord. Right? Right? That's what I want for my kids. And I know that that is what you want for your kids too. But there is one problem. You see, there's this something, something that gets in the way of us raising these amazing world changer children. And that something is fear. I don't know about you, but as a mama, the last thing that I ever, ever, ever want to happen to my kids is anything bad in the world. I want to protect them. I want to love them. I want to hug them and snuggle them and keep them in this bubble. And you moms know you are the same. We want to keep our kids in this safe, protective bubble. And we pray that God would keep them safe and God would help them be happy. And those are great prayers. But if you want to raise world changing kids, kids who go out and just do amazing things for the gospel, who don't just sit at home and be scared and be your typical normal American kid, but who grow up to be mighty warriors in the faith, we have got to overcome this fear, ladies. Let me tell you, I struggle with it. I know you struggle with it. But today, I have somebody that you are going to want to hear from. Today, I am interviewing Lee Nienheis, author of the book, Brave Moms, Brave Kids, A Battle Plan for Raising Heroes. In this interview, we are talking about how to raise brave kids, how to be a brave, confident, prayer warrior mom without being totally crazy and stupid and sending them out in ways that would not be wise and how to just really lean on God through everything as we raise these amazing bundles of joy that he has given us. So if you are a mom who wants to raise amazing, great kids for the kingdom and you know it starts with you, do not miss this interview that is coming up right now. Hey everyone, we are here today. I am so excited to share with you Lee Nienheis, author of the book, Brave Moms, Brave Kids. I first heard Lee speak not very long ago. She was giving a talk at a conference. I was right outside because I was late. I had a different meeting and I just overheard her talking and was like, I have got to get in here. This sounds like such a powerful talk and such a powerful message. I absolutely want to hear what she has to share. And then I went and picked up her book, Brave Mom, Brave Kids. And the more that I read it and listened to it, I knew that I just had to share this message with you. So hi, Lee. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, Brittany, it's so fun to get to talk to you today. And I felt that connection when we met too. <laughs> so let's start off. Tell us a little bit about your book, Brave Moms, Brave Kids. So Brave Moms, Brave Kids came out in February. Um, it's published with Harvest House, which was very exciting. This is my first book. Um, and yay! And it's so fun for it to be in the world today. But really, the journey started about four years ago um, when I was speaking around our area and in West Michigan, um, doing mom's talks and talking to really just groups of mops, moms. And I began to see that the area of fear was becoming a greater and greater problem in our motherhood journey. And that's probably for lots of reasons, like the world feels like in some ways it's it's spinning up. And so I was looking at that fear and I was asking the question, how do we raise children to live bravely in this culture for the Lord Jesus when we're struggling with fear in ourselves? And so I needed to know what that would look like to raise children of courage who would live boldly and courageously for Christ. And really what I found out is that that journey was going to start in me first. And so that's really where Brave Moms, Brave Kids began. 
Yeah, as I was, I was actually listening to the audiobook of it this morning, and I just had to stop a few times. For one, because I was getting choked up, just like the topic of raising these amazing kids who are going to go and be warriors for Christ. And then also putting that next to the thought of something could happen to our kids. Um, this is something that is so dear to me as well, because I have kids, and that's a huge dream of mine, that they would go be kingdom warriors. But I totally am in the camp right now where I'm like, but God, like do all these things, but keep them safe because these are my babies. Um, so I had to stop and I wrote down a couple of quotes of yours. And I don't have them right in front of me. Um, but one of them, you were talking about how we have to be brave moms first if we're going to raise brave kids. So can you tell us a little bit what that looks like? What does it mean to be a brave mom? Well, BRAVE is an acronym that I created, but when I first started studying the area of bravery, um, or really just doing what God says that we're called to do, which is to take the next step with Him, no matter what the next step looks like. And so for me, that began in the book of um, Joshua and, and really the beginning of Judges as well. And I was looking at this transition and you probably know this part in scripture where the exodus happens and the children of Israel go to the edge of the promised land and God says, send in spies. And there's 12 spies that go out and they look into this land and, um, 10 of them come back with this report and they're like, yes, it's an incredible land, but there are giants in the land and walled cities there and it's dangerous and they're going to kill our children and our wives. And two of them, Caleb and Joshua, go and look at that same land and they see everything that the other 10 saw, but they say we're going into that land because God promised us that we could and that he would be with us. And ultimately, the 10 kind of outweigh the 12 or the other too and they don't go into the promised land and that was that moment where I figured out that fear could actually be an act of disobedience and the Lord says because you did not believe me and enter into the land then you will suffer a consequence and um, that was a, just a stopping moment where I realized fear doesn't let me off the hook you probably understand that Brittany um Fear doesn't let us off the hook. And so BRAVE really starts in the acronym and really in motherhood in general with believing that God is going to do what he says he is going to do. And so I look around at most of America, which still believes that there is a God, but we find that most of America isn't believing God, that he, what he says he means and what he says he can do, he can do. And so for me, brave begins with taking God at his word, whatever that looks like, because he says he is with us and he has lists and lists and scores and scores of promises, but it really is asking this question, do I believe him? Okay, so once you started to look into that and you said, okay, so I have to actually make changes in my life, as you said, fear doesn't let you off the hook. So what did that actually look like? What things did you start doing or changes did you make that you weren't doing before? Um, fear became a real problem. I am sure you know this, but I've heard it said that when authors decide to write, they're going to be baptized in whatever it is that they were writing about. And that was true for me. I thought I was facing fear and like I was dealing with the fear that I had. I actually had started crafting this message when the Lord just really let me go through a few months of sifting. And I think that was to get to the bottom of my fear. So I went through a really terrifying season where I had nightmares and 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 was dealing with lots of fears. And at the at the time, um, ISIS was running wild and in Iraq. And I was looking at that going, oh, my gosh, this is not this is not good. Not good at all. What do I do? What do I do? And so I went to scripture and I was memorizing five pages of do not fear notes and I, I mean and I became almost manic about it because I knew what I was supposed to do I was spending time in the word and I was memorizing things that told me not to fear and at the end of the day Brittany it was realizing um first of all that God's grip on me and on my sanity was much stronger than my grip on him 
And so realizing he would not let me go. And he has created you as a mother and your children to stand in this generation. His purposes for us are not to fail. And so that's one of the things we're going to have to believe about him. But for me, ultimately, and, and you read this in the book, that one night by a campfire in the middle of writing this book, I dealt with fear in what I call just kind of a ceremony where I just said, no more. Um, and what that looked like for me was giving, is reciting to myself all the reasons why I don't need to fear. And it's not just because he told me so, but it was because of who he is and his character and his praiseworthiness so that he is the most high. He is a strong tower. He is omniscient, all powerful, the king of kings. And really, I've learned that it is impossible for us to fear and worship at the same time. Um, God created fear, which is not something that we say a lot, but God gave us as humans that emotional capacity of fear. And it was actually to move us to a place of worship and reverence and awe where we want to obey him. And so... Um, I realize that anything that God creates in itself is good, but that the enemy can twist it and use it against us. And so the resolution for fear for me, and I'm not saying we're going to be done forever, but we have broken up, um, is, is to worship. And so the way that plays out in my life now is that when I start to feel afraid, I don't pull out five pages of verses on do not fear. I actually spend time meditating on who God is and his divine attributes, that he's the king of kings, that he appointed me, he called me, he chose me, he's a father to me. And that has been the resolution to my fear, not just telling me, don't be afraid. So I have another question for you. And that is in your book, as I was reading this morning, you talk about how, yes, it's okay to pray that our kids are safe and we want our kids to be safe, but we can't just stop there. We need to pray better prayers for them. Can you unpack for me a little bit of what that would look like? Because I am totally so guilty of praying that God would keep my kids safe. And I want to do that. But what other bigger, bolder prayers could I be praying instead? Oh, such a good question. Because safe is tricky. I mean, of course we want to keep them safe. We've been given this child by God to raise for his glory. But really, um, after safe is so much more. So first of all, we want to always pray that our kids become Christ followers. That is the most important prayer that we could pray is that they would come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. That should, until that has been accomplished in our children's lives, that is our first and greatest prayer. And then really the next prayers are that they would seek him, that they would love his word, that they would find him admirable, admirable and praiseworthy, that he would be their greatest love and affection. Um, I, I, a hundred prayers, Brittany, um, you know, but most of that they would learn to love others more than they love themselves, that they would answer his call on their lives. Um, for their purity. I mean, there's just, there's prayers that are, I think, bigger and stronger than just safe. Okay. I like that. That's very practical. Practical. Now I'm tripping over my words too. Uh, yeah, something that we could do. So I have another question for you on the practical side of things. So as a mom, my oldest is getting to be the age where he's starting to be ready for more independence. My little ones, I can still make them hold my hand and stay next to me all day long, but this one is old enough where I'm starting to have to make some decisions like, do I let him go to the bathroom by himself? Do I let him go to the library and hang out at a different part of the building than me? And I feel like he's old enough to do these things and I can trust him. But then I see something on Facebook about how there was some really suspicious person at the grocery store that's a mile down the road from my house. And it just brings in all of this fear that I usually try to just ignore and everything's fine. But when you hear these things, 
So how do you actually go about making decisions? Because we don't want to be scared, but then we still do want to make wise choices and you can't just let them loose in the world. It's still a scary world. So how do you kind of find that balance? Um, first of all, I pray uh, about those decisions, about the decision that I'm making as mom. Like, Lord, my desire is to keep them safe, but not to protect them overprotect them or to keep them from things that you want them to be doing. So Lord, would you just inform this area for me? And then of course, we're going to do our research. There's uh, times when we can feel comfortable sending our kids to the bathroom alone and there's just places and times that I don't. I, we just got done with a huge road trip. And there are times when I said to my eight-year-old, buddy, I don't have anybody to send into that bathroom at the rest area where you're going in with mom. And that was a wise decision because I don't know what's on the other side of that door. And I'm not being creepy. There's just some things that we're going to hold them back from doing. And I think if you're married, your husband is a good checkpoint for that. It's good to ask some friends their opinion. And I, I like to have friends on both sides of the spectrum. So I have got good friends like you, Brittany, who are like, I'm going to wait. But I have really wise and godly friends on the other side who say prote over protecting them isn't a good thing. And I've let my kids do that. So I always do some research about, you know, certain things about certain times. I feel like, you know, the library may be a safe place. Um, but each decision, each time, and and that's a myriad of things. Only you know your area and only God knows what your kid can handle. And so, Every decision we just hold before him and we try to say, Lord, am I making a decision based in fear? Because the decisions I make based in fear bear bad fruit in our lives. Or is this out of wisdom that you've given us? You know, and then, well, then we want to listen to that. That's a really good point. Yeah, that is, I'm writing that down as soon as this podcast is over because that is such a good point. We want to make wise decisions, but not decisions that are based on fear. I love it. So if you could impart one message to our listeners, what would that be? That Jesus is worth it. At the end of all of this, the reason why we mother, the reason why we strive to become godly women is for the honor and glory of Jesus. And this is not because we follow after a savior who is threatening and condemning, but because we know he loves us and he has set his affection on us and our eternity with him is sure and there will be a day when there is a reward and that includes mothering that is the why behind why we've been given these children is because we can raise someone to come to know and love him too and it's worth it all these secret hidden, not secret bad, but hidden choices that we make to honor and glorify Jesus in our quiet times, in our lives, all the times we stop and do these thankless things, they are seen by a God who loves us. And so these choices that we wrestle through, even whether we're sending our kids to the library, all of them are honoring and pointing to Jesus because we love him. And I think that is my core message is that he is worth it. He is worth doing the hard work in mothering. It's he is worth it doing the hard work in life. He is just worth it. I love that message. I try to use that same message so much on my website as well. So that's something that definitely hits home for me as well. Um, let me ask you another question just to see what you come up with. Um, but this idea of being brave and not being a total helicopter parent is pretty countercultural in our days. Um, it just seems like either moms are helicopter parents or they feel really guilty like they should be. If you're not, like you kind of have to keep it a secret because it's not socially acceptable. So are there any things that you do that your friends and family wouldn't agree with or that would think that is kind of weird? Uh, my family makes totally different choices than I make, period. Um, I am more conservative than they are. I wasn't raised the way that we're raising our kids. My family um, loves 
the Lord, but I'm on the conservative side of the stick. So there are some times where I'm like, I, they think I'm making a big deal out of something, whether, whether that's encouraging my children in the area of purity and what they put before their eyes and what they listen to. Um, I take all of that seriously, um, probably more than they do. And at the other side, I think I have a... Um, I got to think how to say this for a second, but... I think I I think I expect more from my kids emotionally and spiritually and intellectually than my family would as well. I have higher expectations of my children and I tend to entrust them with things quicker. And I don't mean like social media things. I mean with them, with my respect, with what I will confide in them, with the way that I explain the things that are happening in the world. I expect that I can reason with them as spiritual beings, that we can have intellectual conversations where there is a moral right and wrong. And um, I think that looks different. I'm not busy leaving that up to chance either. I'm doing the work to make sure that they're ready for those conversations and to be a part of those decisions. So in some ways, I look completely different from the people around me, but I think I've also built a friend group around me that is engaging the same way that we do. That's so important, though, that you say a friend group. Are those people that you purposely went out and went after to kind of put those people in your life around you to encourage you, or did that kind of just happen organically? Um, I At first, I think it happened organically, and we just started raising kids at the same time, and we were looking at some of the same resources that helped define our parenting, and um, I always want to run with my closest friends being the ones who want to follow where God's leading them in general. So those will, of course, be my closest friends. And then I've started intentionally seeking out people that are a step ahead where I can get the advice that I need for the step that I'm on. Um, a friend of mine, Scott Schimmel, is... Uh, in California, but he said recently to me, I'm building a council around my children because they may not want to talk to me about every decision or they may not feel comfortable doing that, but I want them to know that there are grownups in their life that they can talk to about certain things. And so I've been real intentional to try to ask my kids, who do you want that council around us to be? And a couple of times recently, especially with my oldest, I I've needed to consult the council. Now, we're not all co-parenting, but they are invested in my son and they want what's best for him. And so uh, recently I've been looking at limitations that we're going to put on social media and cell phones and that kind of thing. And I want to know what the council thinks about that. Um, we're doing this thing together and they've been so helpful. So that's one of the things that I would just really encourage that we're trying to do is find people that are paying attention to your kids and are invested and ask them some questions too. That is such a great idea. And I love how you got your kids input on that too, because that's something that I wouldn't have even thought of, but yeah, that would be so helpful, especially as our kids hit the teenage years and you know they're not going to want to talk to us all the time. That's just natural, but to have those people. Um, so let me ask you, what about if there's somebody who's listening right now that their family and friend group is not really supportive of their choices, um, specifically in the area of being brave, but just in anything, if their family is really isn't supportive, do you have any advice for them on how they can make these brave decisions and bold decisions for their family, even when it's not culturally acceptable or in their family? Yeah. Uh, your why is what's going to keep you walking forward. So I would just ask, like, why are you doing this? Why are you making the decision to trust your kids to the Father? And and then out of that why, because we believe that he's worth it, we move forward. And I do think that is entirely appropriate to try to find a support system outside of your family. And for a time, I don't think my family was really excited about what was happening 
you know, with me and the way that we, the choices we were making too. And God did bring friendships. And sometimes it takes a while. But you, there are online relationships that are doing this for us. Brittany, you are pointing everybody to Jesus every day. You are being a support system. So we can find that in books we read, in podcasts that we listen to, um, you know, blogs that we follow. You can find that support somewhere. You just need to look for it. And I, I would encourage those moms, if they're not already plugged into their local church, to get plugged in there. Okay, so question for you. If somebody has listened to this and they're saying, yes, I want to be a more brave mom and I want to help my kids to be brave, obviously their first step is going to be to go get your book, Brave Moms, Brave Kids. I was reading it. It's really good. It's not even just about not helicopter parenting, but so much more in terms of how to raise just warriors for Christ who are going to go shake the gates of the kingdom. But what should they do next? Where will they go after that? Okay, so here's the truth. The next thing that shaped my life after figuring this out is that I'm a part of Moms in Prayer International. I'm a Moms in Prayer mom. And Moms in Prayer is an organization. It's free, um, but there it, it's just a group of moms that you get together with. It's one other mom that you pray strategically for your children and your schools. So is this Moms in Prayer, is it all online or is it local? It's at a local level. We're in all 50 states, 146 countries around the world. It was founded by Fern Nichols. She was an elementary school teacher and then mom sent her kids into middle school and was terrified by what she found there. And so she just started praying with a group of local moms. And so it really just helped me find my feet in prayer. Most women feel like prayer is an area um, of defeat in their lives. That's just what I'm finding. Like they just don't think they're very good at it. And the truth is, is that part of being brave is learning to own our responsibility as an intercessor for our for our families. That's good. That's good. I'm going to have to look into that. And of course, I'm going to give links to all of these things, um, links to your website, links to Mom and Prayer, definitely links to your books so that people can learn more. Is there anything else that you want to share with us today? Any final closing marks that you wanted to make sure that you mentioned? Brittany, I just love it that you are following where God leads you. It takes a brave mom to say, I'm struggling with fear. And that was where we kind of connected hearts when we were at that conference afterwards. I mean, there's one Achilles heel in the life of a mom and it's our children. And that's natural. But here's the thing is that there's this process where God entrusts the raising of our children to us. And we are to raise them for his glory. That was a trusting relationship when he handed them to us. And then there's this moment where we have to open our hands back and give them back to him. And that can be terrifying unless we really know our God. And that moment, that double, double entrusting the Lord to us and us back to the Lord, it's in that dance, in that, in that back and forth with him, that we will find the greatest growth and trust in him and a place beyond fear, which is freedom. And you know, freedom feels so good. It's almost like, why would we ever turn back to that place where we were shackled by fear? Yeah, I am not afraid to say that I fear for my kids is totally my Achilles heel in parenting. I love my babies and I would hate for anything to ever, ever, ever happen to them. I just want to hug them all the time um, and then send them to play sometimes so I can get stuff done. But um yeah, this is just such an important message and such an important journey. And I can't wait to start taking more of these steps. And I really hope everyone listening right now is kind of processing and, okay, what does this look like? And how could I do this? And how can I trust God more to step out in faith in this way, knowing that he is going to protect my babies. He is going to protect my family and he is going to be the amazing God that he is. So thank you so, 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 so much for coming on the podcast today. It has been fantastic 
talking to you and definitely everyone who is listening go ahead check out the links so that you can hear more from Lee because this is definitely a book that you will want to read. Thanks, Brittany. I've loved being with you. All right, mamas, that about does it for today's interview. If you liked this message, if you want to hear more from Lee, I absolutely encourage you to go ahead and check out her book, Brave Mom, Brave Kids, A Battle Plan for Raising Heroes. With all of the good wisdom and advice and perspective that she gave us in today's interview, let me tell you, it is just a fraction of the really awesome writing that she includes in her book. I was reading it already this morning and there were so many times where I had to stop and take notes because there were things I do not want to forget. If you are a Christian mom who wants to raise amazing world changing children and you want to do it without being bogged down by all the fear and anxiety that comes with raising kids in today's world, I absolutely encourage you to go ahead and check out this book. The link is below in the description. Um, and I have links to all the other things she talked about too. And also, if you loved this interview and you want more like it, go ahead and make sure that you subscribe. This is just one. I have so many more interviews lined up for you that you are not going to want to miss. They're going to encourage you as a Christian, as a wife, as a mom, because you know what? This journey that we are on is not easy. God never said it was going to be easy. And you know what? It's not. But like Lee said in the video, it is so worth it. It really is, you guys. So don't do this alone. Go ahead and subscribe and get that encouragement and that advice and perspective that you know that you need in your life in order to be able to live this amazing Christian life that God has for you. So that is it for today, and I hope to see you around real soon.